did just what she told me. I lived. I've got to find out what to do now. If there's one thing the 1953 release of Kinsey's sexual behavior in the human female made clear, it's that women were having a lot more sex than they had previously been letting on. A divine man, such talented fingers, but oh, what he did to my bust. Nearly half the women included in the report had had premarital sex, and a strong majority had some kind of non-intercourse sexual contact, what was referred to as petting at the time. Though Kinsey's report received a split response from the U.S. public, with some outraged and others relieved, one of the raciest books of the year. It signaled that major shifts were underway in U.S. society. We often think of the 1950s as a conservative or sexually repressed period, and this conception has some merit, but during the decade, the foundations were being laid for the cultural revolutions that marked the 1960s. Enter Maine Dennis. But darling, I'm your Auntie Maine! Auntie Mame was released in 1958 to huge box office success. Its star, Rosalind Russell, played the title character in both the Smash Broadway play and the Hollywood film. Auntie Mame was nominated for a Best Picture Oscar, and Russell was nominated for Best Actress. Yet, when we watch the film, it feels radical in many ways. Our main character is an unapologetically single woman. She drinks like a fish, Patrick, get me another drink. sends her nephew to an experimental school where the kids go to class naked. Boys, girls, teachers, romping around stark naked, bare as the day they were born. And her best friend apparently doesn't like children. She just loves little boys. Yeah. In many ways, she represents the shifting societal norms that were in the process of rewriting acceptable femininity. We're first introduced to Mame through one of her frequent parties. Peppering the scene are a variety of interesting characters, including a group of women who appear to be coded as lesbians, wearing masculine suits and ties that recall 1920s and 1930s lesbian iconography. The production code would have prohibited the representation of homosexuality during this period, and we never directly focus on these three women, but the fact of their presence suggests that the filmmakers were intentionally trying to subvert norms of heterosexual femininity. Certainly, one could also make the case, and many have, that Mame's character has queer undertones herself. Then, there's Gooch. Your name is, uh... Agnes Gooch. Oh. Mame's first secretary clearly has at least a professional crush on Mame. Everything Mrs. Burnside dictates is so wonderful and a non-professional crush on Mame's non-contributing editor, O'Banion. And you, Mr. O'Banion. This recalls Kinsey's scale, which posits that sexuality is a continuum, and most of us exist somewhere in the middle. Poor Gooch finds herself pregnant, and supposedly unmarried after a drunk night on the town with O'Banion. It almost doesn't matter that we eventually find out that they did get married, because at all points leading up to that reveal, the film seems sympathetic to Agnes's situation. The only people passing judgment on her pregnancy are the bigots we're meant to dislike. A bunch of riffraff. I only hope when we marry, you won't invite people like this to our house. Like Mame's marriage to Beauregard, the revelation of Gooch and O'Banion's marriage is a throwaway, meant for laughs and perhaps to appease the production code office. <laughs> leaving the audience free to accept that maybe we should be more accepting of unmarried mothers. Fighting the stigma of the unwed mother. After all, if half of the women are having premarital sex, as Kinsey's report asserted, an unplanned pregnancy could happen to almost anyone. Oh, no, 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 Annie Vera. Of course, Auntie Mame is not a completely liberatory film. For all its protestations of bigotry, it contains an unfortunately orientalist representation of Ito. You want? Mame's Japanese domestic worker. Ito is a likable and sympathetic character, but his stereotype portrayal is hard to watch. And outside of Bo's southern plantation, African Americans are completely absent from the film. In the scene set in the south, we see a few black actors dressed as servants in the background, and only one of them has a line. Look at her run. She's passing everybody. 
In this way, the film was very much of its time, blind to its own bigotry, though in many ways trying to put forward a progressive vision of the world. They're building a home there for refugee Jewish children. What's that? Still, Rosalind Russell's version of Auntie Mame remains iconic, continuing to find audiences six decades after its initial release. And in many ways, she still feels radical, reminding us to be brave and reject the social constraints that keep us from living. Yes, life is a banquet, and most poor suckers are starving to death now. Come on, Agnes, live! live. Come, child! Live. 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 I'm Laura Ivins. Thank you for watching.